Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, I am Oliver, and just in case you don't know me, I guess you don't know me, um, I'm a coworker of Anya, who was your host last time, and if she is the queen of MOOC making, and if I'm her coworker, I guess this makes me the hand of the queen. So, um, hello again. Today we'd like to present you some um, projects in different countries which are related to OER and we have a bunch of people here as you can see and I think it's best if we start with a brief introduction and um, I don't know we should start maybe we'll go to Finland first where we have Anna, Ilmari and Thomas and yeah maybe you just introduce yourself with one brief sentence maybe Anna maybe you could start All right, I can just say briefly. So uh, I'm Anna Lindfors, I work in CSC and I'm doing this uh, open educational resource, resources um, service for Finland. And uh, together with Ilmari, we have been part of this OER webinar series. And for this webinar, uh, we invited Thomas from Arcada to join us to tell about one of the current OER, OER um, initiatives that are ongoing in Finland. Maybe Ilmari and Thomas, you want to say something about yourself as well? Yeah, just briefly, yeah. Well, if I continue shortly, I'm Ilmari Auhan, I'm from the Federation of Finnish Learned Societies, and I work as a secretary for the National Open Education Expert Panel in Finland. Yep. Hi everyone, my name is Thomas Helsten uh, and I come from Arcada University of Applied Science and uh, I'm a lecturer in physiotherapy and uh, uh, I'm working beside my uh, teaching also now in a project that is called Sotepeda 24-7 and um, yeah we are working with uh, uh, a platform that will be open for everyone and uh, yeah and I will introduce a little bit about our platform today at this meeting. Yeah, maybe now we can move from Finland to Sweden where we have Jörg and Jörg. Maybe you could give a warm welcome to everybody as well. Yeah, sure. A warm welcome <laughs> from Sweden, from snowy Sweden in the middle of Sweden, from Karlstad. Uh, uh, my name is Jörg Paregis. I'm the head of the Center for Teaching and Learning at Karlstad University and the co-organizer of a course called Open Network Learning, which I will introduce to you in a couple of minutes. And then we have, we, we can go to Germany now, where we've, uh, uh, Chris, you, you don't have an, uh, um, a video in a picture, but um, I guess, uh, just so you, everybody knows, uh, Chris is our technician in the background, a wizard who, uh, yeah, make sure that everything runs smoothly. So thanks to you, Chris. And then we have um, Kerstin, maybe you could say some words. Hi, and warm welcome from Hamburg to sunny Hamburg. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm, I'm a professor for teaching and learning and with digital media. And at the moment I'm working at the center for, yes, teaching and learning at the University of Hamburg. And I will introduce today to a couple of projects and give a little view on different um, formats and structures. Yeah. And then last but not least, we have Gabi, who will, yeah. so, yeah, well, uh, he, he, she will uh, yeah, keep an eye on the chat and uh, <laughs> take down all the questions that you have. And uh, maybe you could yeah, introduce yourself as well briefly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Gavi. I'm uh, the blog editor of OER Info, um, the host of today's webinar. Um, and as Oliver told you, I will follow the chat and forward your hopefully numerous questions to the experts today. So, okay. Yeah, so thanks a lot. Um, yeah, as Gabi just mentioned, we have some uh, people who are watching right now, so live. And um, if you have any questions, feel encouraged to, to ask them in the chat and our experts will answer them um, mm -hmm. after their presentations. Speaking of, um, yeah, I think everybody mentioned um, what, what they're going to do, but um, let me 
rephrase that a little bit from what I learned, and uh, I, I think we are going to see. So, um, yeah, in my order, Sweden comes first. So, uh, Jörg is going to show us the open network learning platform, which is maybe a course, maybe uh, it's a community, maybe it's an approach, and we will learn about that. And then next on my list is Finland, but um, yeah, I, I think there is no, no set order, but um, I, I think Thomas mentioned it, we have Sotepeda. I think it was a little Norwegian pronunciation because I lived there, but uh, Sotepeda, uh, a project which is um, about OER for healthcare. And, and one thing I can, can mention right now, but which uh, I think is pretty interesting that you include ethics, so you discuss, um, what implications using digital tools in, in healthcare has. So um, it will be interesting for me. And last but not least, we have uh, Kerstin from Germany and she will give us an overview of uh, several projects in, in Germany. So if, if I got that correct, maybe you could nod your head a little bit. Yeah, okay, nothing wrong. So um, yeah, as I said, we don't have a particular order, but I think um, we, we, we'll just take mine. Um, so Jörg, um, you're first on my list. Would you like to start and give us an overview of uh, open network learning? Sure. Um, I'll just share my screen. And um, you should now see the slide I started with last week, at uh, last time at the last webinar, right? And now we're on uh, what's happening in Sweden. Uh, part two, right? So um, I used all my fancy tricks from PowerPoint uh, to make this happening. Um, today I will um, start a talk about, I mentioned it briefly, a course, a community and approach which we call Open Network Learning, um, which is a course organized by, um, by uh, five universities in Sweden as in, the, in the core of it uh, since 2014 a course for teacher development and development of uh, professional development of uh, educational technologists. And um, it's an open course. Um, it's uh, based on network learning. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's maybe much more uh, than this. Um, it's an approach to understanding online uh, teaching and learning. Uh, Alistair Krielmann, uh, Maria Kornström, myself, Lars Olin, and Lotta Obianson are the uh, core organizing team. And if you want to see uh, what, check out the homepage, um, you can go to opennetworklearning.se. The course is ongoing at the moment. Last time we had a few participants from the course joining us. Uh, hopefully there's one or the others today as well. Um, today I'm just gonna give you a brief overview of how this course is organized and in which way it's open and in which way it's also a, a, a closed community. Um, so the ONL community consists of uh, the universities I uh, mentioned before um, or the Participants from those organizations, Karolinska University, Institute, Stockholm University, Linneus, Meladalen, and Karlstad University. But we also have Linköping Lund um, uh, University from Sweden. And we have two Finnish <laughs> universities. Uh, maybe that's news to you from uh, <laughs> for Thomas. I don't know if you did know about that, that Akara is also part of this uh, uh, community and approach, Alto University, also from Finland. And then we have from Germany, uh, University of Oldenburg, which is part of the uh, course organizing team um, and of the network and of the community. And then we have Zurich, University of Applied Sciences, and the National University of Singapore and two South African universities, Eduko and IA Varsity College. So um, this, uh, uh, those uh, universities, um, they use this course for their professional development of their staff members. And each university has um, uh, six places, um, six spots to fill for participants of the university. And uh, together we will, uh, with open learners, uh, which can come from all parts from the world and make up um, uh, small PBL groups, problem-based learning groups. Um, so, um, so 
participants from all those universities are gathered in two uh, in, in, in PBL groups of um, eight people and um, uh, open learners and um, institutional participants. And each PBL group, each problem-based learning group will uh, receive um, um, a facilitator and a co-facilitator to guide the um, problem-based learning process in the group. And um, yeah, this is the basic setup. Uh, and um, so um, maybe I should show you the home page as well. Uh, if I quickly move over to the home page. Do you see the home page now? Yep, this is the home page. Um, so this is the open, completely open part of it. Here you see the late, latest course information, a little bit in structure, what the course is about, a little bit advertising. Um, here in the top menu, you see more background information on the course. If this little presentation is not good enough for you, you can read all about it here. Um, here you have the course overview of the topics we cover. We start with um, getting started week to set up um, the tools and we need for the course. We have a connecting week where we try to introduce everyone to each other. And then we start with five topics. Of the first topic is about online participation and digital literacies. Then we move on um, to open learning. So openness is part of the content of the course as well. Then we have a reflection week. And, and right now we're in the middle of topic three, learning in communities and network collaborative learning. And then uh, next week we move on to design for online and blended learning. As I said, this course is for teacher development and educational te technologists. So um, um, this seems to be some good opportunities for uh, teaching and learning. And uh, then most important, the fifth topic, uh, what can we take from this course and implement in our own practice? Each participant is, um, um, is asked to um, start their own blog and write reflective blog posts um, about the learnings in the course from the webinars and tweet chats we do in the course and from the PBL group um, work, the problem-based uh, work in, which is taking place two weeks for each, each topic. Um, all the, for those participants who want to, and this is part of the openness in this course, um, are asked to connect their blog to the course homepage. So all participants who write reflective blog posts, let us know here who want to have their blog post listed on the course homepage. They can quickly let us know the website and then we will collect all blog posts from all participants underneath here. So you see here numerous, I guess we're up into the, hundreds of um, blog posts about the uh, open network learning and the different topics from the different participants. Here you see one blog post by uh, Dirk Möller. Uh, when we click on it, you will come to Dirk's homepage with his reflections out in the open about his topics. Here was maybe just a short post, uh, more to come. Uh, if we go back, you see maybe more an, an extensive post here. Um, where the participants reflect and then here also of course this is why we use this in the open also for others to be able to comment and start a discussion on the each individual reflections um, in this way um, it's a very open course um, uh, we also have a part which is a kind of more um, a closed community. Uh, this is the next part here when you click on uh, on the ONL192 community space um, um, link, then you come back to the LMS part of it, so to speak. It's also on WordPress as this whole page is. This is only for the um, participants which are part of the PBL groups. And there we have a forum and uh, the um, PBL groups have some additional resources um, for their PBL group work. Um, meetings take place in Zoom as we meet today. Um, and um, other tools which are used are um, Google Drive um, 
um, yeah, environment which we uh, su uh, supply for the PBL groups, but uh, some PBL groups use also their own tools uh, for, for their collaboration online. And um, yeah, um, this means uh, in this course you can participate as an institutional learner, as part of the, of the universities, if we go back to um, my slides here. You can um, participate as a, as a teacher from one of the universities, which are around the circle. You can participate as an open learner within a PBL group, but you can also participate as independent learner uh, when you just connect your blog, read the blog posts of the others, connect to the other participants by participating in the weekly webinars or tweet chats, which we support and uh, provide and uh, run. And um, yeah, so it's an open network learning course about open network learning. This is, uh, this is, the, this is my brief presentation I wanted to give you about the course. I have another um, a quick um, project I wanted to, um, um, or yeah, a project which is very much related to and inspired by the Open Network Learning Course, um, actually uh, from Sweden. And this is um, uh, the work we do at Karlstad University, where we uh, run, after, where we develop several open online courses um, based on the strategic research centers we ha have here at the uh, universities. And um, here we do the concept very much similar to open network learning. We have a credit bearing online course and in, last, uh, in the last webinar I told you how to apply for courses in Sweden. You go to the central space and apply for a certain, for a specific course in higher education. We have this course as well here um, in the system for our strategy at Karlstad University. But then we designed the course in an open fashion where we um, where we run the course uh, on open platforms such as WordPress. And uh, by this, we have a, 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 a two courses in one uh, design. And um, where you can participate in the course similar in, as in open network learning, as open learner, as independent learning without needing to apply for anything, you just participate, but you can also apply uh, or participate as um, institutional learner, as a, a student who wants to receive ECTS for the course. But uh, both student groups meet on the same open course homepage. And we do this um, for the broad variety of courses which you see here at Karlstad Universities, uh, answering different calls of our main financer, a research financer, and um, by, uh, by today we have now uh, up and running somewhat a, a good 10 or 11 courses which are designed by the same open online um, concept. So two uh, more um, hands-on um, examples from, from the Swedish setting. Um, yeah, if you wonder about anything about those, uh, shoot right in the chat or get in touch. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jörg. Um, you just mentioned the chat. I have some questions already, but I guess I have to wait until the end. Um, yeah, we, we can move to Finland now. And Thomas, um, you're, you're welcome to share your experience with um, Sotepeda. So just, just go ahead if you're ready. Yeah, <clears throat> hi. Let's start. Um, here, mm. can you see now my PowerPoint? Perfect. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Thomas Helsten, and yeah, I'm coming from uh, Arcade University of Applied Science, and we are uh, working in a project that is called uh, Sotepede 24/7. And in this project, it's, uh, we have several different uh, universities that are uh, working together, but I will come to that later. But the main uh, idea is that uh, we know that uh, the digitalization 
in today's society is it's constantly evolving and expanding and it uh, influences everything in the society today and uh, also that we know that what the technology how it can uh, help us and at the same time also uh, the uh, time and uh, um, social and welfare sector uh, it's in an in innovation process to improve the effectiveness and um, yeah so i think everybody uh, or we know we know this and this is quite global but or it's global and uh, the goals of our project uh, it has started in uh, 2018 and it will end in 2020 so we are uh, in the middle of the project at the moment but our goals uh, when when this project will be ending uh, is, is to develop uh, the expertise of educa edu educators, students, and for working life uh, in digital pedagogies, pedagogy and services, and uh, especially in the social and health healthcare. And uh, we are working uh, uh, together, and we we create new uh, digital courses and pedagogical approaches to, to, to these groups uh, that will ensure a fluent uh, study that the students can do, for example, year around in, 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 in a di digital uh, environment. Uh, this project here, you can see we have 24 partners in this uh, project and uh, Laurea University of uh, Applied Science, they are the coordinator uh, of this project. Uh, our idea in this pro project is that when uh, the most of, uh, of, of uh, our teachers that are work working in this project are from the social and uh, healthcare, so that we know that when we are uh, the different di di digital gadgets, they need the uh, competencies from different different sectors from from the engineers from the social uh, sector also from the economics so it can be a, a, a good working uh, platform or what what what, we're, what we are then uh, using so we need uh, everyone and uh, yeah when we are uh, working with this uh, project and the learn uh, material we are also working in multidisciplinary uh, uh, environments and in we just uh, opened the first courses or the first uh, micros in in this project but from uh, the in the end of uh, uh, 2020 uh, our goal is our mission is that we have an open learning environment uh, for for uh, for multidisciplinary studies for the social and healthcare sector for the engineers and the economics and uh, we have different uh, different uh, based uh, studies you can do mono uh, by uh, by safe dialogue and trialogue learning approach in this in this, um, in this uh, uh, on on this uh, platform uh, well, this uh, I just go uh, very this uh, shortly, but uh, before in the beginning of the project, of course, we, we start with the definition of uh, what kind of different digital competencies uh, we need in the health and social uh, care, and we started with with that. So we uh, to know uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, material we should start to to, to build. And the uh, results of this, this we get uh, these kind of, of competencies uh, in, in this project. And uh, for example, online interaction competencies, what I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit more about and show you about the, uh, the material we have in, in, in for example, in, in this competence part. Yeah. But the idea is uh, is uh, we have we, we're gonna have a, or we have already a Digi Campus platform where you can choose the content for your students or for uh, also for the uh, 
working working people working people for example a physiotherapist that we have a competence area and then like a, a lego bricks you can then uh, build your own own uh, module it, it it depends you have a, a, a micros they are very very small uh, for for example five to ten minutes some uh, podcasts or, or video present presentations about the, the team mm, and then we will we have uh, also building this uh, mock a massive open uh, access uh, platform for, for 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 the students are also for the working people we have a roadmap for every 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 part so that the teacher the student they know how to how to go uh, further in the process yeah okay but now i think i will go i'm, I'm going to show a little bit about the uh, online interaction competencies and uh, the most unfortunate the most of the material here when it's it's, it's in finland we have uh, we are working with this project is in Finnish, but we have also in Swedish, and we will get more uh, material in Swedish and a little bit also in English. But I could now show so here, okay, and uh, so here we are. Can you see now? So perfect. So here you can see, for example. Uh, this should be open for, for everyone, for example, to, to, to go and watch this. But we have this uh, at Digi Campus. This is the platform that we have uh, uh, we are working on, and it's open for uh, every everyone. So when you register here, you can uh, get this material from here. And uh, yeah, this material is is open here. You can see here is this competence areas. This is now in Finnish, but uh, here is the online Verkovora Vaikutus Osaminen what I'm going to tell a bit more about now, or I will show you. So it, it will then open like this, uh, that we have here different, uh, uh, we call these micros. And when you open them, uh, they, are, uh, they open, uh, here can be some text, what you have to be read. Uh, it can be a video, a podcast, and uh, different pedagogical uh, approaches. Yeah. So here you can see the, the, the material here down, and I will go a little bit more down here about uh, tele-rehabilitation or, or distance rehabilitating So uh, I show you, you a little bit about this. So um, yeah, so if you are interested in, in tele-rehabilitation, for example, for the students, if you are a teacher and you want to, what, what should I take in my course? The idea is that you can pick from here, you can pick uh, already, uh, worked materials and take to your your courses and uh, here we start with this uh, part one for example it's like this it's 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 a podcast for example uh, i don't know. okay yeah well <laughs> so we can maybe here it's it's a podcast you listen first on the podcast and after that uh, we have uh, for example here some questions that you should then answer for example for example the student they uh, they have listened to the podcast, then they answer on the, the uh, questions. Okay, that was wrong now, this time. So, but, uh, and then you go to the next, uh, next uh, questions. So it, it, it works, uh, it works uh, like this. And then we have, uh, oops, I'm sorry. We have here, um, yeah, different than uh, micros that you, that, that you, that you can uh, then do, but I think, and then I can show this. This is, for example, uh, when they have the last, uh, what is simulating in English uh, simu simulation? Oh, I don't know, <laughs> maybe. So, so or when you have uh, done all those uh, different parts in this uh, tele-rehabilitation, in the last part is that you, you, you train yourself how to take contact with with uh, with your client uh, with for example like this uh, with zoom or or what uh, a platform you have in at, at your work or in the school okay but this was a very uh, fast uh, introduction in, in this uh, project and uh, we will have in this project over 100 uh, 
to this small micro, so it's going to be a bunch of different uh, materials. Yeah. But this was uh, my short introduction to this uh, project we have here in Finland. Yeah, thanks a lot, Thomas. Um, I have questions again, but I guess I have to wait as well. But it just, um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll leave them to the end. Um, yeah, Cassin, it's up to you. Would you like to continue with Germany? and give us an uh, overview of the projects that we have, some of the projects that we have. I, I noticed, I know some of them, which is good for me. <laughs> uh, guessing you have to switch on your microphone. Should be, there should be a symbol at the lower left corner. On the left side or, uh, yeah. of yes, your screen? Yeah, that looks good. The mouse doesn't, uh, yeah, doesn't work now. if you have the screencast. So, okay, can you see this screen, the slides? Yes? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity today to give um, an exemplary view of Germany um, on OER in this webinar. Um, my impulse concludes the presentation of selected projects and formats, and it is less about the individual projects, rather interested in which structures they are and stands as example. Um, I didn't choose only one project because there are a lot of activities in Germany, and my I hope to um, could be give a little overview so you have an impression about. Uh, the range of the activities. Uh, instead of one course uh, like you presented, I think there are a lot of links I have to um, include in the presentation so you can uh, look for your own after the presentation. Um, but the, a lot of um, um, sessions or, or courses are in German at the moment, so I think it's better to look uh, overall and therefore I differentiate between three dimensions. Firstly, between projects that focus on the micro or meso or macro level. And secondly, I different, different, uh, differentiate between projects that focus more on education or open education. In Germany, we call it uh, Lehre. Um, focuses more on networking, community building, or on research in the field of OER. And the third dimension is support in infrastructure. Um, and um, naturally, uh, the projects cannot all be categorized precisely, but they can be identified as priorities. And in addition, the overview is not complete, but it's intended to give an impression. For example, um, the map shows an overview of funded projects by the Federal Ministry of Education and Research up to 2018. And the focus here is on qualification, information and networking. It was addressed to schools, universities, continuing education and adult education. And here you can find um, 18 projects with different interesting formats and structures that have em emerged there. We made for this um, funded um, phase a visual map. You can see the German um, here. And we made a document booklet or a, a special issue about the projects you can download if you um, have the possibility to read in German. <laughs> but um, we made, uh, yes, we made the documentation because the funding ended for the most of the projects in 2018. Mm -hmm. And there are some overarching projects and um, which one of them is uh, this one. We are, uh, have the webinar in it and Anya introduced to, to them um, already in the last session. These are the OER info project, for example, and the jointly project. 
um, I named two of them, with, uh, which focus on my mind uh, on the macro or meso level, have the option or have the um, aim to make um, or at the macro level or a country projects um, are also um, related, but this one, they have the overview, they make uh, information transfer and networking. And I think it's uh, very important that there are uh, some central place where every uh, line were connected and met, and we have the um, connection to the international discussion too, like in this webinar. I um, pointed out that there are some projects funded from the federal ministry. We have also projects on our state uh, level or state ministry. We are uh, 16 states in Germany. I think it's a very yes, special um, context, sometimes very helpful and sometimes it makes some processes a little bit complicated. And so we have a lot of initiatives and I selected four um, of them. Um, we have, you can say, um, a projects at country level have their own profiles. Um, let's um, look at the macro level or OAR countries project like, uh, or e.g. OERBV from Baden-Württemberg or Hamburg Open Online University from Hamburg. Um, there are some other projects have been launched or have developed further in the right direction of openness, e.g. the Open VHB from Bavarian. Um, and you can say the um, initiative started or um, uh, been launched or developed further in the last five years um, up to openness and OER. And regardless of the project orientation, the aim is to make an OER repository, repository available um, in some variations. In addition comes some of our of OER as resources, uh, like a micro content, or merged into a learning offer, like a complex scenario, you can say. And there are another example, that's the research project EduArc, from North Rhine-Westphalia, and it concerns in a, in a group with the development of an OER infrastructure, looking for an ecology for OER and um, develop infra infrastructural um, um, sustainability in the uh, OER infrastructure and life cycle, you can say, and looking on the quality of OER too but it's a theme of all other projects too. Um, yes, you can say projects at country level have their own profile. And because I'm from Hamburg and I'm working with the Hamburg Open Online University, I have a brief view um, on the, you can say, uh, core ideas of the Hamburg Open Online University. Um, I don't show some courses or micro content. You can imagine there are some, um, like in the other states, some um, courses about math, about historian, about digital literacies. We have got small, like micro content. We have got open uh, courses made with Moodle or some some other systems. But all of the um, projects have some have the same direction. And since 2014, uh, the six public state universities of the federal state of Hamburg and the government um, and, the, and the state ministry of education collaborates in the project Hamburg Open Online University, uh, short WHO. And this project is part of the digitalization strategy of the city of Hamburg and where processes of digitization are bundled, um, also processes of open science or open scholarship, and this one is the open education focus. And the basic concept you can see here of the WHO is defi uh, defined by four ideas which, uh, which represent the WHO brand with WHO learning arrangements, you can say. And first, 
there's a pedagogical idea of learner orientation and collaboration, e.g. working in problem solving groups or online project work with the function of teams. And the second one is the idea of academic content and academic competences or, a, or content about academic level, you can say. And the third one is the idea of reaching new groups of learners outside of the universities, outside the re regular students which are, uh, who are present at the um, presents university in mixed team, teams of learners and working with civic and social teams. And first, it's a, one of the um, new course in 2014 was to uh, the idea of openness and the consequent use of OER. Also using open source software for the OER repository, if possible, and the dynamic Who platform with social media elements. These are uh, everyone part of the Who brand learning arrangements. Um, behind the idea of the Who, there are some new uh, directions. Uh, I think other states looked for, um, like the cooperation or the near, uh, near cooperation of the universities and the state ministry and other support structures. Um, that uh, would be um, uh, a structure, it would be a take of other states too as a good idea. And in, on the other wise to cooperate, um, like you uh, presented for the course. In, in Sweden um, with other um, universities and universities of all or, or um, actors of all parts. On the other hand, you, you have other projects in Germany and I take one of, uh, one of mine of these, uh, these funded period until 2018. Um, mine, I, I have to say, with a, a big team. Uh, special thanks to um, Tobias Steiner, who uh, made this part from presentation. And um, this is, uh, this is a, um, a similar called a synergy of learning and teaching with OER. And I think it's exemplary for a lot of um, projects in school or higher education, near to higher education, which have a mixed um, approach. Like here, you can see at the pencil, we had the approach to uh, advise and open uh, or um, offers advising and open workshops and media support and media uh, production um, have to make um, is an uh, awareness award um, approach um, develop some yes um, handouts and something for teachers for learners and Inform and um, have information and evaluation parts in there. It was um, um, the other pro project duration was March to June to 18, and the target groups were uh, teaching staff and teacher training, or sometimes uh, students too. And it's uh, focused on meso and micro level because the aim was to. Um, um, uh, um, have to be in the end structures we can adapt in the best case to the um, to the structures at the moment. And one of these elements was an open lab. And if you can, uh, if you look at the um, header, you can see some more Aero Labs uh, logos of the German um, landscape. Because I think Edu Labs or the lab idea was one central and very um, good idea to make sure that there aren't only support structures yet, like you now, like workshops, like uh, inform papers, but new spaces or new places. And in Germany, we uh, in Germany and in, in Hamburg at the Sündler project, we we uh, looked at the uh, idea of De Rosa and Blickensdorfer because we thought about open lab or OER in the open lab is more than OER or open education. You have to widen the open view. And so I think it's very um, important to now that open is even more as it's open ended and it's more than, uh, uh, than, than 
or it's like uh, free speech and it's open access and OER, we call, uh, we go, uh, go a step further and say we combine, combine open access, open education to an open scholarship idea in our similar lab or in this open lab. And it's open for business and it's open like every, everyone can come, I came in and like an open arms and there are several lab ideas in germany someone focuses on podcasts someone uh, working with established micro um, structures like wikimedia foundation and uh, i think this is a very great potential for the further development uh, for oer networking and education in a com combined um, modus and only uh, to reduce us on something like makerspaces. I think the open lab is something uh, which includes makerspaces, includes workshops, includes um, um, something like, you know, from supports, but it could be uh, more and more uh, um, part of community building. Yes, here you can see some special uh, um, examples I, named in the um, last slide. And we, we, talk, uh, we thought about lab, um, labs or laboratories are places of possibilities. Yes, like a mindset and, uh, and a place of support and networking. And here on the right side, you can see some, um, some um, outcomes from our work on the practice, pre open, you can say open educational practices we make uh, or we, we informed about OER, how to make OER, but we made OER with the teachers too. And we talked about did I, yes, uh, pedagogical scenarios to working like uh, open pedagogy framework uh, focuses on. And yes, um, some of these you can find in our um, open lab blog too. On the last one, I, I like to focus on the research focus. And um, you named the University of Oldenburg yet, and in Germany, the colleague um, Olaf Zawacki Richter uh, opened this a network. And um, there's an Oldenburg and Center for Open Educational Research on the start for um, yes, one year, some, some more than one a year established, but uh, developed, I think, uh, more than two years, Olaf worked on it. And it's an international research center founded there. And at the moment, it's a network of 25 professors, postdoctoral researchers, and doctoral students from 10 countries. And, and it, has, it has a link uh, to the EDUARC project, too, I uh, mentioned on the first time. And the research focuses on into open and distance learning, education and technology in international education. Uh, I would say it's mm, it's more than the macro even uh, macro level and looking on uh, strategies of countries or perhaps states. Um, also, everybody, every uh, member can make research on the micro level too. But I think at the moment the curve focuses uh, the the overview, the macro level. So if you look at the um, our first slide with uh, the dimensions, I make a little, uh, I make a, uh, or I place the projects in, in this she theme and I think you can uh, very good have an um, impression about Every, about, about the exemplary projects like the similar projects or like EduLabs that we are very active in the micro and meso level, um, for fostering networking. And there I, I would see the jointly an OER info project um, and the main point on the macro level, but um, going um, down to the micro level too in some parts of formats. And we have on the one side a very um, strong activity on the state level. You can see the three um, exemplary pl um, platforms who open VRB of Bavarian and see one of the um, 
Baden-Württemberg, um, Laura Saxony opens his too, um, and uh, Anja talked about. And on the right side, you can see um, research and support and infrastructure uh, grows further too. And um, if you look on this map, because there are only examples, you can't find a gap, I have to say, because um, in, in every part, we have, if you look at the other projects, we have also in Germany um, connections to research and to infrastructure. But um, you can say uh, the main focus is at the moment on education and networking, I think. And for my, con uh, my conclusion is to strengthening, strengthening the OEP, the open educational practice, equally needs a broad and a narrow perspective on measures and projects. And I think that's, uh, that would be, be a very important step uh, in Germany, but also in other states to make the move from OER focus, including or up to OEP, because the, um, I think the wider one and the more pedagogical or process orientation one than the product uh, orientation. So yes, uh, that's uh, impressions of Germany. I hope you have got some ideas, some links to look on your own after this. And thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Kerstin. <clears throat> so if you stop sharing, then the people will be able to see us again. Yeah, in, yeah, in full. That's great. So um, I have a lot of questions already, but I think we should first have a look at the chat and maybe you have some questions. So Gabi, are there questions in the chat that we could ask our experts now? Oh, you, you have to switch on your microphone, please. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. No, um, <laughs> there are no questions in the chat no, right no. now. Okay, maybe maybe people, there will be some. <laughs> yeah, maybe people are shy. Uh, you can you can ask in your question uh, your language as well. Um, I could say that in German. You can auch in eurer Sprache Fragen stellen. Yeah. So um, we will have someone to, tr to translate. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, First, I'll ask all the, the experts here. Do you have questions to the others or should I pose my questions? Yeah, I have. Oh, yeah, well, okay. Then go first. Yeah. Kerstin, thank you so much for your presentation. There's so much going on in Germany. How, how did you manage and how do you get governmental support? <laughs> Um, Just a quick, easy yeah. question for Monday afternoon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I talked about the funded um, period from the projects of the map you can see. There was a big, um, you can say, wave of supporting. And now I, I would say there are some further projects um, and then in, ended in 2020 or 2019, like OER Info, I think, uh, gave it. Gabi could um, talk uh, now on some more. Uh, at the moment, I, I would say there are a lot of um, state activities. There are some projects. And on the, on the um, federal level, we have got a lot of policy papers at the moment. Uh, you can say we have an, a, dig a strategy for digitalization. We have open access strategy, the um, theme OER, um, is um, implemented in, in federal sub, uh, funding programs like teacher quality or teacher excellence quality. Um, I think these, at the moment, the elements to uh, to to make or to uh, foster the theme, but um, it could be more <laughs> uh, on handling, and it could be more on central activities. Uh, I, I assume it would be something like, um, yes, a space between two waves, I hope. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of, um, yes, um, a lot of benefit from the last f uh, funded wave uh, I talked about, and I think it needs some further one, uh, or on the um, state one, someone more than repository funding, uh, something like community building, networking, 
and a lot of awareness is also needed after the two years we had the opportunity to uh, yes experiment with a lot of formats and structures but um, it would be for one and a half year at the, the um, most cases of funding and, and is it okay if I ask, uh, ask a follow-up question? Uh, because just because you're saying between the second wave and you're hoping for a second wave, tomorrow uh, the UNESCO will uh, start their global conference for the next two weeks. And hopefully at the end of this, we will have a new OER recommendation by, OER, by the UNESCO for all countries. Do you expect uh, any, uh, any push for the second wave from this? Um, I think, mm, I, I hope. I hope about this because um, I I think it would uh, would be fostering or, or strengthen the activities in the states uh, from the people who decide to make um, platforms and something, and on the federal um, level, I think uh, it could be um, yes an, an important pull for the policy papers, but um, policy papers and doing and making are one uh, or are two things of the same metal you know and i think there is some some uh, yes turn there's some uh, further turn necessary to go from digitization which is fostering or strengthening in um, germany uh, up to openness especially in, the, in, in a further time Excellent. i'm Optimize, optimist. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, maybe maybe I could ask one question to our Finnish experts. Um, we we just learned about the platform, and all the micros you call it or micros, like all these small units and exercises. I noticed you use H five P. Um, first first question would be how many uh, micros do you have and uh, maybe to all of you, do you know how much it's spread across Finland or Sweden? Or you said they're available in English as well. Do you know on a global scale how much is, is the content reused and maybe even modified? So question number one, how many micros are there and do you know um, how far they spread already? Uh, yeah, at the moment we just uh, opened uh, this platform uh, okay. this month, so we don't have any data on that. So we, uh, we uh, I cannot s say that. Yeah. But, uh, hopefully it will spread <laughs> all over the Europe, but probably the most uh, people are using it in Finland because uh, the most of the material will be in Finnish, mm -hmm. and as we know, so it's not so easy language. Um, but some material will be in Swedish also because we are, yeah, we are speaking to the languages in yeah. Finland. And uh, yeah, you had one, how many micros uh, mm -hmm. we have? Uh, well, uh, it's going to be, uh, as I Just a rough estimate, maybe. One, exactly. one, one, two hundred micro micros okay. because they are these small packages we are mm -hmm. called micros. But the main idea is that you can take just these uh, small micros to, to, uh, to your own, uh, for example, education or if you want to do for teachers, for example. Yeah. You, you don't need to take the whole package, it's just a small part. Yeah, I especially like that idea because um, I think it's good to have like small building blocks that you can arrange the way you like and you need. Yeah, so I like that a lot. Yeah. Gabi, do we have questions in the chat now? Okay, because I have some more questions and I'll, I, if you don't mind, I'll just continue. If that's fine for all of you. Or do you have questions? No, no questions. No questions in the chat? You don't no. have questions either? <laughs> okay, then one question goes to Jörg. I, I am very interested in that idea of uh, using blogs to display the thoughts and uh, experiences of people. And um, I just wonder, are people reluctant to do it from your experience or do they fear going out into the open and sharing their thoughts or do you have some um, helping hands that you give them or could you maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit because I think it's pretty interesting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, people are scared. 
people think it's frightening people yeah. think it's scary um and we we acknowledge this and uh, we, it's not obligatory in this course i presented it's um, but we do show a lot of examples of other participants mm -hmm. having done this i think this helped a lot and um and then we we in the small groups of in the pbl groups we we talk about it and we say that it's only about personal reflections we give some tips about blog writing and that it's more it's not about showing how good you are it's more showing that you're thinking about this uh, and it's a lot of about handling emotions i think instead of the technical stuff mm -hmm. everyone is able to set this up but a lot of people feel that it's a big pressure to start writing out in the open yeah yeah but, uh, i think like if you look at the how many signed up uh, i think we have 100 participants in the course i guess 80 or so uh, connected open blocks to the course homepage. So it's a pretty, pretty good ratio, actually. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, it's impressive. Hmm. It's good fun. Uh, uh, Gabby, good read. Uh, have, a, have a look. <laughs> yeah, I will, definitely. Uh, Gabby, um, I think we're at the end now, but I have one final question. Maybe I could ask if that's fine with you. You're smiling. Okay. One final question to all of you because it, um, it, it popped to my head when I saw the presentation of uh, Kerstin. Um, you've seen that, or Kerstin has told that Germany is split into 16 different states. And now in Germany, every um, state is creating its own infrastructure, its own platform, and basically they're doing the same thing over and over again. And I just wonder if it's the same in, in Finland and Sweden. Do you also have like um, little kingdoms in your in your country where each uh, duke or account does its own stuff and yeah you know, why would be more sensible to maybe have it on a on a country level yeah uh, well uh, i can perhaps say yeah. to finland so uh in some sense yes we have this sort of uh small initiatives uh, that different states are running but uh, at the same time currently we are doing a national platform for uh, sharing open educational resources uh, which is a bit uh, easier i guess in finland because we're such a small country uh, but it's still a lot of work <laughs> hopefully it'll succeed <laughs> Okay, thank And you're in Sweden? What, what's yeah, like in, in, Sweden? in Sweden, we also only 10 million people here, so we don't have, it's still a very large country uh, geographically, but like in parts of open, uh, there's been nothing going on uh, because mm -hmm. uh, maybe, I don't, I don't really know why, really, maybe it's part of the, <laughs> maybe culture, uh, but like we had a project um, uh, in 2011 and 12 about OER, um, but since then it's been pretty quiet. So this is why I was so keen on being part of this uh, webinar series to maybe highlighting what's going on in other countries uh, yeah. to my fellow countrymen here in Sweden. Yeah. Okay. So I think we can wrap it up now. Oh, uh, there was one thing on the chat. No, you're welcome. Okay, that was just a thank you, not a question. So uh, I guess we can call the day. Yeah. Thank, thanks a lot. And uh, I don't, Gabi, you have to help me now because I don't remember when the next webinar will be. It will be on December 2nd. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're interested in that subject, or we are in the cross countries, then just yeah, have a look at uh, when was December 2nd? 2nd. Yeah. Second. Okay. Just tune in again. Mm -hmm. See you. See you. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.